Now, in the last couple of years, though, things have changed uh, a lot because we have a couple of new agents in the NK1 field, which is nice. Uh, it was the early 2000s when aprepidin came out and around 2008 when the fosaprepidin studies were completed showing non-inferiority. So now we have new drugs, and uh, let's talk about those a little bit. So one new kid on the block is natupatent, um, which is only available in combination with palinocitron. So uh, the name emerged of NEPA, which is natupatent plus palo, NEPA, or the brand name is Akinzio. Um, that has um, you know several advantages. One is that both the natupatin has a very long half-life, and then you're combining it with palinocitron, which many of us prefer. Um, oral palinocitron, sometimes in the United States, people are a little are wondering about that. But it turns out the rest of the world, um, including all of Europe, uses oral palinocitron, and the studies show that they're equivalent. Right, Jim? And that is absolutely <laughs> okay. correct. Although that was a question our docs were asking sure. when I was talking about it. Oral palinocitron. But, yeah. but you know, yes, it it, is available. <laughs> every 5-HT3 receptor antagonist has been tested in the IV versus oral form, and they're all equal. Yeah. All the first generations, as well as palinocitron. We so, just don't have it available in yeah. the United States as a single agent. So this natupatent is only in combination with Palo as a pill, um, which, it, depending on the practice, can be a major advantage or disadvantage uh, in terms of um, funding and payment. Mm -hmm. um, what I do like about it is it's one simple pill to take, and it uh, basically it, it encapsulates the uh, guidelines in that you're getting the 5-HT3 with the NK1. Um, so I think it, it's, a, it's a promising tool. You can't get natupatent by itself. It's always in combination. And you can have an all oral regimen here. You can have the one pill of uh, Akinzio plus dexamethasone orally. So for the patients who would prefer that or if the flow in the practice would allow that, that's mm -hmm. an option, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's been studied in, in highly metagenic chemotherapy, um, um, not only in the first cycle, but multiple cycles. It's been studied in AEC, which is a tough patient population, and it's been studied in MEC. So there's some good data on it. Good. What other drugs have come out? Well, I guess the other uh, agent that's uh, NK1 that's uh, now available is Verubi or Rilapitin, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, just has been uh, approved uh, not so long ago. Uh, again, an oral agent um, uh, that's, again, going to be recommended to be used in combination uh, with either 5-HC3 and MEC, or, or I'm sorry, and HEC, plus uh, steroids. Um, so that, um, like I said, has just uh, recently been approved. It also has a much longer half-life, uh, and that's probably been one of the bigger changes, at least in the landscape of these agents, is that inherently the molecule itself uh, has a much longer half-life, you know, when you compare it to, say, a first-generation gen first 5-HC3, you know, with a four or up to a nine-hour half-life, depending upon the product. Uh, so these inherently, uh, you know, um, uh, have longer half-lives, and, and probably even more importantly, uh, there's data now that show that they stay on the receptor uh, for that kind of whole uh, period of both acute and delayed, uh, which I think has been an advantage to the new so with these new agents, and they're kind of a class, um, you know, they're, they're all NK1 receptor antagonists. I try to think of what is the advantage of each of them in each kind of niche. And the one that I'm, th when I think of uh, with Rilopitin or Valruby is um, the 3A4. Uh, so it has d decreased 3A4 interactions. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in those patients that are on a bunch of other medications and your pharmacist is calling you about all the drug-drug interactions, um, you know, this is, I think, something for us to think about. So yeah, we should mention, actually, because we didn't talk about that for a prepotent, mm -hmm. about the interaction and uh, dose adjustments, particularly dexamethasone, if mm -hmm. someone wants to talk about that. So there is, there is information that with the dexamethasone, let me back up, dexamethasone is oftentimes used, you can argue about the dose, but oftentimes it's 20 milligrams we use for highly metagenic chemotherapy, but because of this interaction, 12 milligrams of dexamethasone when you give it with, with a prepotent is equal, equal to 20 milligrams you would give without that, so that studies adjust for that, that aspect of things. But as the other thing, just to carry on with what you're saying there, we don't really have any comparative trial from the four different NK1 receptor antagonists, and we're not likely to get that sort of a trial there, and they seem pretty similar. Fair? Yeah, I think it's just, again, the niche in your payment model and where you're at. Yeah. And so um, this is allowing us to get um, a good 
class of medications into patients in a variety of ways. Yep. Yep. And um, you know, if you're looking at someone, you know, um, we'll, we'll discuss, I'm sure, multi-day chemotherapies on immunosuppressives, say in the BMT setting or something, I feel like um, you know, relopatin has a bigger role. If you have a patient that's really far uh, from home, um, or from the, the cancer center, maybe the oral is a nice uh, patient-centered alternative. So I just try to think about that. But of course, you know, um, institutional guidelines and payments often limit, you know, which options exactly. we can use. Yes. Yeah. What kind of clinical experience have you seen with this, Jim? I can only speak on the Akinzio side. Uh, we've certainly uh, have looked at um, using it in some uh, uh, unique patient populations, one of them being our uh, autologous transplant uh, patients uh, that have multiple myeloma. Uh, they're receiving high-dose melphalan uh, on the inpatient uh, side of things. We have uh, used uh, Akinzio actually very effectively um, for one day um, prior to their um, uh, uh, prep regimen uh, to get their transplant. The other place that we have, have some clinical experience with the Kinzio uh, is in five-day platinum, uh, where patients uh, on that kind of fifth day of platinum therapy will be given uh, a Kinzio, particularly those patients that do live far away. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are a, a referral center, uh, so we get patients kind of from all over the, uh, all over the western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, uh, and northern West Virginia areas. Um, so we'll uh, give them um, three drug regimen uh, for the first four days uh, with some of the uh, shorter acting agents and then on uh, day five use uh, a Kinzio. Uh, so when they leave clinic, uh, they'll be covered uh, in that um, uh, delayed phase uh, and utilize uh, the pharmacokinetics of the new drugs. Great. I uh, had some experience in the clinical trials with both uh, NEPA and relapidant, and I was impressed in the clinical trials on uh, the efficacy of both, and uh, recently have started to integrate the use of the oral agents into our clinic. And you have to work out your operational flow there, but we've seen when we use these drugs that they're both long-acting, and I think that's an important aspect of them, as you said. So you can give them once and then don't have to worry about, about that. It. They've been effective. And I think it just takes some preparation in terms of how you uh, adjust uh, the flow in the clinic of mm -hmm. giving your supportive care medications and also making sure that the benefits are structured right for the patients, uh, however they're acquiring the drug as well. So if you have, as we do, a dispensing pharmacy, mm -hmm. that may be one opportunity uh, to use these drugs and to really fit the flow in nicely. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you, Lee. And uh, the, the other thing, uh, you know, a little work may need to be done on the front end. Some of the local insurers may have tried to tier these newer oral agents, uh, and so there may be some work done or needs to be done uh, on the front end to make sure that there's coverage and that they're really put on the same tier as, uh, as some of the older mm -hmm. agents. Um, but once that happens, uh, we've had really good success uh, with uh, with the Kinzio, um, at least in those uh, couple uh, specific populations that uh, you know that we started using on it, uh, we also have seen it used in some refractory patients uh, uh, that they've gotten uh, kind of our workhorse 5-HT3 and NK1 and steroids, uh, and we switched over to uh, a Kinzio, uh, and uh, that seemed to uh, to be effective in those kind of refractory patients. Not all of them, but but a good majority of them. Yeah, the other opportunity for Verubi and Akinzio is to reduce chair time potentially when you have a busy practice. In my own practice, everybody seems to want to get treated between 10 and 2, so <laughs> it looks like we a train station patient. in there. And uh, yeah, so uh, there are opportunities for the practice flow as well. So thanks.